we're the Jelvix team, and today we're diving into a topic that had us buzzing in our latest project, WebRTC versus WebSocket. We decided to compare them, and it turned into a battle. Keep watching. We are Jelvix, a software development partner for industry leaders. We post weekly videos on tech in five minutes. Don't forget to subscribe. Also, use the super thanks feature to support our channel so we can deliver more great content. Have you ever heard of WebRTC? WebRTC, or Web Real-Time Communications, is an open source protocol that allows real-time communication. It's a key player in video chats and voice calls helping connect people irrespective of their device or platform. One of our developers, Alex, was in charge of implementing WebRTC on a project and shared some insights with us. He was particularly impressed with the simplicity of WebRTC's JavaScript APIs, which enabled him to seamlessly integrate real-time video calls across different browsers and mobile devices. But let's talk about the backend magic. WebRTC uses something called NAT, Network Address Translation. It works with Stun and Turn servers to make your private IP address go public safely. This process sounds complex, but it's incredibly efficient. When a user initiates a video call using WebRTC, their device requests their public IP from the Stun or Turn servers and then lets the other user's devices know how to connect. This establishes a real-time connection, allowing seamless communication. Now, switching gears, let's talk about WebSocket. It's a protocol that maintains a persistent connection between a client's browser and a server. We used it in one of our recent projects involving a crypto trading website that leveraged WebSocket for continuous data display. Emma was part of this project, so we went to speak with her about it. Emma calls WebSocket an effortless two-way street. She said it allowed for real-time data display, and we couldn't be happier with its efficiency. Now, it's important to know how it differs from WebRTC's operation. For instance, Emma thought of one more project we had, where we established real-time video call functionality. She noticed some key differences. Unlike WebRTC, WebSockets work in a client-server model. When a video call is initiated, the browser sends a handshake request to the server using WebSockets. This changes the protocol from HTTP to WebSockets, creating a continuous and two-way communication channel. This feature was invaluable in our project. Establishing a stable, bi-directional connection without frequent disconnects or lag significantly enhanced the user experience. Now, you may wonder when to use WebRTC and WebSocket. The beauty of these two technologies is that they're not mutually exclusive. They often complement each other in real-world applications. At Jelvix, we've utilized WebRTC in various applications, from live broadcasting to AI-based conversational bots. It's particularly beneficial when focusing on media transmission and real-time communication. On the other hand, WebSocket shines in scenarios involving constant data flow, like social feeds, location-based apps, and online education platforms. But the magic happens when these two technologies are used together. WebRTC doesn't inherently provide signaling for opening and closing communication. It's here that WebSocket comes in, acting as a signaling mechanism and beautifully complementing WebRTC. It's fascinating to see how these two distinct technologies can interplay to bring out the best in our applications. Before we continue, press the like button and subscribe to our channel. However, they both have pros and cons. In the process, we at Jelvix have noted for ourselves several features that will allow you to make the right choice for your project. WebRTC, for example, doesn't require additional plugins or software to operate, which is a significant advantage. It also automatically adjusts audio and video quality to suit the environment and provides encrypted connections. However, 
We've found its service in public domains can be unreliable, and it can present integration challenges. WebSocket, on the other hand, allows instant server responses to client requests, reducing latency issues. It's also capable of establishing faster connections than HTTP and AJAX. However, its development could be more complex, and it lacks support for edge caching. Also, some of our team members noticed WebSocket is much more suitable when you need to transfer non-multimedia or non-stream data over the network in a real-time manner, like game events or notifications. In this light, a question that we're often asked is whether WebRTC can replace WebSocket. At Jelvix, we believe in using the right tool for the right job. From our experience, WebRTC and WebSocket serve unique roles and aren't substitutes for each other. While WebRTC facilitates direct communication between browsers, WebSocket is critical in establishing the initial connection. This synergy allows for efficient and effective real-time communication. And if you can't wait to watch another epic battle in the world of technology, we recommend our video comparing Python and Node.js. Also, support us by liking this video and leaving a comment. And remember to subscribe and press the bell button. Bye for now.